We have a special video today. Which is why I'm looking bathed for once. I bought my bus two and a half years ago. And now that I finally got it to the point of doneness, where whatever little projects still remain are probably going to happen either very slowly or not at all, I thought I would do a tour. So this is my bus. It's a 2004 Thomas something or other. It's 27 feet long. The engine is a Cummins 24 valve. That's all I know about that. I do live in here full time and I have since a little over a year ago, but I've spent large chunks of that year either traveling away from the bus or living in the bus while parked for long periods of time at like at a house. So don't be fooled. I am not a diehard bus person. I just happen to own one. Anyway, the bus is named Burby. That's from an inside joke. I named it that to roast my brother and then he suggested I call my YouTube channel Emma Builds Burby. Also as a joke, but I guess ultimately the joke was on me because people started watching that channel and now the name's pretty set in stone. But if you're wondering what the significance or deeper meaning is to the name Burby, there isn't one. I have, I think, 525 watts of solar on the roof, and that's the only way that I get power. I don't have a generator, and I bought an alternator charger and then never installed it. So, yeah, I think that's all there is to say about the outside. As we move into the entryway, you will immediately start to see the evidence that this bus is not actually finished. Starting with these two long bolts holding the door together and unfinished lumber. These stairs have not been touched whatsoever other than to put these foot scrapey carpet thingies down, which I probably should not be sitting on because they have gotten kind of disgusting. In fact, this whole entry stairway, which is the first thing anyone sees, is the most original area that remains in the bus and not in an intentional pretty way, just because I've not gotten around to doing anything about it. If we come up the stairs, we get to the driver's area. I've done almost nothing to the dash except for add this little table shelf thing for all of my driving gizmos to sit on. I have this thing that reads my gas mileage, check engine codes, that kind of stuff. My monitor for my backup cameras, a thing to mount my GoPro to, nothing too crazy. The rest of this space still looks pretty disgusting and honestly, it's probably gonna stay that way. The dashboard area and like engine cover thingy are kind of the last area in the bus that still accumulates clutter. If you've been following this for a while, you might know that when I first moved in, the entire bus was still barely finished at best. And a lot of my life at the time was spent just moving clutter from one area to another so that I could work on the bus or just exist in peace. Thankfully that is mostly over with because as the bus has gotten more finished and I've added more storage and organization, everything's gotten cleaner and nicer and less insane. And most of the chaos is usually now consolidated to this area, which I'm very happy about. I recently installed these hooks for coats and stuff right under this front area. And I'm kind of of two minds about these because it does make really great use out of kind of a large area of wasted space, but it also just makes this whole front end of the bus feel kind of messy when there's a lot of stuff on this. And also it's annoying to have to move everything from up here when I drive and have it like cluttering up the couches and stuff. So I've ended up putting most of the stuff that I had up here elsewhere, but there's a few things that still linger. I do have my friend staying in the bus with me for the summer. So maybe once I'm in the bus by myself again, I won't need to use this at all. And then over here in the driver's seat, we've just been keeping our musical instruments that we never play. Those go into the bathroom when I drive. Same for this laundry basket, which I built a special space for underneath the bed in the back and never put it back there. These are my curtains that I still have never hung up. And this is my skylight cover, which doesn't usually go here. It just happens to be here right now. Up here, I built this little storage area. There's something similar here originally, but it was nowhere near as deep. So I extended this out quite a bit and made this new wall thingy and these doors on the sides. But then this door in the middle was what was originally here. When I was moving into the bus, I was going through this huge pile of scrap that I still had lying around from demo. And I found this door and I saved it just in case I ever got around to reusing it. And I'm kind of surprised that I actually did. This is one of those rare instances when saving garbage pays off. I just painted it to match everything and I love it. I think it looks so cute. In the living room, I just have these two matching couches here. The backrests hinge forward. I thought I might as well make this space accessible just in case I wanted to ever use it. So I can put odds and ends back here. Right now I just have a bunch of books back here. It also creates a nice opportunity to see some of the lovely spray foam insulation. And there's a cool crevice here where you could potentially drop stuff and never see it again. From here down, these couches appear to be multifunctional, but they are not. When I was first planning the layout in here, right when I bought the bus, I was envisioning these couches pulling out and meeting in the middle 
to create a giant mega bed where all my friends could just pile in and sleep whenever we were out on our grand adventures. And I didn't want to do the typical like slotted pull out couches that a lot of people do. I don't remember why now, but I, I know I felt very strongly about it at the time. But I saw somebody else use drawer slides and I thought that seemed like the move. But the thing is that that could be a really good design, but to make it great in practice, it requires a lot of precision, which is not my strength, especially when it comes to building. So I made these little slide outs, but they never worked that well, and they don't look very good on the front, and it was always interfering with the storage in there. And I also realized that to actually make this a mega bed, I would have to carry around a ton of extra foam, which seems like a hassle. Especially when you consider that as I have actually lived in here, I've realized that having a bunch of other people or even some other people actually stay in here is just way too chaotic to be a fun experience. I think the thing I didn't account for when I was imagining all my friends coming on adventures in the bus with me was that when people come and stay somewhere, they bring a ton of stuff and there's just not room in here for any more stuff. Long story short, I've never used this space as a bedroom in the way that I was initially imagining it. And the whole thing has turned out to be kind of a mild fail. I took out both of the slidey platform things in the last few weeks. So now in here, there's just a bunch of storage. You just have to lift up these to get to it, which is so much easier than what you had to do before. There's also two seat belts in each bench, which I recently discovered are not long enough for any normal adult to use. Back here, I have these little ledges with outlets and space to store all of my little knickknacks. The last thing that I really would like to get done in here is to add pieces of trim in between the windows. And that about sums up the living room. Moving on to the kitchen slash office space. This is the kitchen half. My countertops are MDF with epoxy. I wanted to do a sort of imitation terrazzo and overall I'm, I'm happy with how they turned out. It's the kind of thing where I think I need to do more epoxy projects to make the learning curve worth my while because I spent way more money and time on this project than I needed to. I had to do the epoxy twice because I upped it up the first time, but even with doing things in a uselessly expensive way and doing it twice, I think I still spent only maybe $400 on the whole project, both countertops, which I think is not too bad for this much countertop, especially one that I like as much as this one, but I still could have done it way cheaper and better. There's more than one video about the specifics of that project if you want to go back and watch. But when I first finished these the second time, I was really happy with how they turned out despite their flaws and since then maybe just because I've had more time to look at said flaws maybe because the rest of the bus has gotten nicer and makes this look worse in comparison but I've definitely been wishing that I hadn't half-assed the stuff that I half-assed the second time around due to the fact that it was the second time and I was over it but overall I'm happy with the look of these countertops and how it kind of goes with everything else in the bus I have this sink it's small but it's really deep and it came with all these accessories like a drying rack and a cutting board that I thought were gonna be really awesome and in reality I pretty much never use any of them. If I was gonna do it again I'd sacrifice a couple more inches of counter space for a little bit wider of a sink because it's really hard to rinse big items in there and I wouldn't bother trying to find the perfect sink with all the accessories because like I said I don't use them. I have this three burner stove and oven both of which I love. An open shelf up here with tea stuff and a candle and a plant that I'm rapidly killing, some cabinets for all of my dishes, and then this pantry, which originally I wanted to be the cool slide out kind, but I ran out of time and motivation, so it's just a regular cupboard. There's not a ton of counter space in the kitchen, and my thought was that I would probably want to use the desk over here as extra counter space, but surprisingly, I don't ever really need to. There's actually quite a bit of space to work with over here, way more than in some of the apartments that I've lived in, and if I ever do need more space, I usually just end up setting stuff on top of the fridge. Speaking of the fridge, this is a 12 volt fridge that opens from the top. I neither love it nor hate it. 12 volt fridges are so expensive. I really didn't put a lot of thought into which one I wanted. I was just sort of on the hunt for anything less than $700. And then Set Power actually ended up giving me this. So that was really nice and it works perfectly well. I'm not a huge fan of like digging around for stuff, but when you live in a bus, you gotta expect some things not to be perfectly convenient, I think. You know, if I was gonna do it again, I might just splurge for a better electrical setup and use a regular mini fridge, but I don't know. Down here, we just have a bunch of storage. Under the sink is just a mess of cleaning supplies and my trash can and my propane water heater. I just have a drawer underneath the bus where there's a mount for two of those like regular grill propane tanks and they never run out. Like it take, I, all I have on propane in here is this and my water heater and having lived in the bus for, well, let's say I've actually fully been living just in the bus for 
I don't know, like five months and I only just now ran out of one of those things. These drawers here just have like silverware, dish rags, your typical kitchen drawer stuff. This giant drawer down here has like pots and pans and stuff like that. This handle is floppy because I ran out of the screws. Haven't been able to find another one slash have been like too lazy to try very hard. I didn't quite get around to putting a toe kick. So I'm not really sure what's going on underneath these cabinets and I'm afraid to look. And again, I didn't have enough time or motivation to put a real drawer here. So I just got these baskets that slide in there nicely. I keep canned stuff in here and then there's another one behind it where I keep like extra paper towels and stuff that I don't need that often. I just have Ikea drawers here and here. They work as storage and also as the legs for this desktop. This cabinet is mostly for electronics. There is a little outlet on the bottom shelf so we can charge stuff while it's put away. And then I didn't have anything on the top shelf so I ended up just throwing a bunch of like cosmetic stuff in there. It's mostly stuff that I never touch, so I should probably just throw it all away, but will I? I don't know. This is just another shelf where I have more odds and ends and decorations, and that's pretty much it. It's really nice to just sit here and work and look out over the beautiful vistas or rest stops or whatever, you know? I almost forgot the best part of my kitchen. Possibly the best part of this whole bus. It's my skylight. I really like it when schoolies look very obviously like school buses both inside and out, which is why I decided to keep all of my windows, even though school bus windows suck. And also one of the reasons why I did not even consider roof raise. The other reasons being that I am not tall and I can already stand fully upright anywhere in this bus. And the other reason was that it seemed really hard. But I do like having people over and I am aware that the majority of people probably do not find this ceiling to be a very comfortable height. I think it's probably at the highest point, like just shy of six feet. So this skylight was my compromise. I figure the kitchen area is the place where the most standing is happening. Everywhere else you're either sitting or laying down or just not spending a lot of time there. So my brother helped me, rather I helped him. He did all of the work and the design. Install this skylight slash mini roof raise and I love it. It brings so much light in. And like basically every time I encounter a tall person, I make them come in here and pretend to be cooking in here and tell me whether it's comfortable or not. And so far I have a 100% approval rate. I think the tallest person that's come in here is like 6'4 or something. So I'd say it was a success. And my brother is an engineer with the most exacting standards of perfection. So basically the opposite of me. So I've never had any problems with leaking. I don't anticipate ever having any problems with leaking. And it's just so pretty. Definitely the showstopper piece of the bus and we're not going to talk too much about the fact that it's also one of the very few parts of the bus that I had absolutely no hand in. We're just going to pretend that's a coincidence, okay? Stepping back into the hallway, we come to the closet. This is one of the more unfinished areas of the bus. I threw this together super quickly before I set off this summer. I had big plans for like custom built drawers and stuff. But if I'm being honest at this point, I'm just not sure if I'll ever get to that. I've just got a clothes rod thing here and some plastic Walmart drawers here. I screwed them into the wall, which sort of messed up the shape a tiny bit. And also they are incredibly overloaded and don't slide very well. So at one point I tried to kick one back in and just kicked a hole in it. So now all my socks fall out all the time. The one vast practical improvement to this closet compared to how I had it last year is that the very last thing I did before I left was grab this scrap piece of plywood and screw it up here. It is not the right size and it looks bad, but I no longer have to put all of the crap on this shelf down onto the floor before driving slash clean it all up after it inevitably flies off while I'm driving. And it really is the little things like that that make a big difference in the mental health insanity department, you know? I am so proud of my little bathroom. This is one of the areas that I did later on in the build. I only finished it a couple months ago. And I surprised myself with the degree to which I was able to take my vision and actually make it happen. So many of the projects that I've done on the bus these past couple of years started out really grand and then through coming face to face with my own experience and lack of skill or my tendency to not put very much effort into detail and precision or just the reality of losing motivation over two and a half years of constant projects. Most of them ended up being either a much lesser version of what I had started out with in my head or just something totally different. But on the bathroom, I really made it happen. And that's not to say there aren't flaws. This is very clearly a DIY amateur project. This is wallpaper. I had a wallpaper that I absolutely loved and wanted to use, but it's too expensive. 
So I just put up plain white vinyl wallpapers from Amazon. It was $17 a roll. One roll covered the whole bathroom. And then I found some stencils and put them together into this pattern. Love how it turned out. I think it is just the perfect amount of weird for me. It's got a few layers of polyurethane on the top. And so far it's held up better than I expected. When I did this, there were people who were concerned about steamy showers making the wallpaper peel. And I don't know if those people have never taken a shower in the bus or if they just have way nicer bus shower setups than I do, but this bathroom has never gotten steamy and it probably never will. The showers I take in here are far too short and too cold for that. What I was concerned about and what so far has not been a problem was actual water on the walls. Granted, I've only been using this bathroom for a couple of months and there is still absolutely time for things to take a turn for the worse, but so far it's holding up great. The toilet is another piece that I'm really proud of, words I never thought I'd say. I set out with this shape in mind for the toilet, but at the point in the build that I got to making this toilet, I was both very tired and very familiar with my own abilities, or lack thereof, and I thought the chances of me getting this curve right and having this fit the way that I wanted it to were slim to none, but I pulled it off first try. I am pretty sure I gave myself carpal tunnel making like 70 cuts with the circular saw, but it turned out so much nicer looking than I expected and it was worth it. This is just a composting toilet and I'm sure most people already know this, but just in case there's anybody watching who's, you know, me a couple years ago, composting toilets are just a way to poop in one bucket and pee in a different bucket. There's nothing more to it than that. I assumed that there must be because if you want to buy a composting toilet, they cost a thousand dollars, but that's it. It's just a couple buckets. I have my pee thingy hooked up to my gray tank. And actually last year when this was just a bare plywood room, I had a fan that went through the floor and sucked out the poop fumes and deposited them outside. But I totally forgot to redrill that hole when I tiled. So right now I no longer have that feature. Maybe I will get around to re-adding it someday. Last but not least, we have the bedroom. This is yet another space, which I love. Honestly, I love this bus. It's been really shocking how much I've ended up loving being in this little space that's just me, you know? Every inch of this place, though it may be crooked and badly done in a lot of areas, it's me and it's mine and it makes an actual really big difference to how I feel when I'm in here. Does that make any sense? I don't even know how to explain it. It's just a very rewarding element of this project that I was not really expecting. Anyway, we're talking about the bedroom. There's not much to say about this room. There's a full-size mattress in here, very comfy. The space in here is big enough for a queen-size mattress if you took out these little storage cubbies over here. There's a charger back here for phones, a little headboard, two little storage cubbies. I imagined a shelf here, sort of like the ones in the kitchen and the office, but we'll see if that ever happens. Our two doors back here, one here, one here. Both of them still open. When I first got the bus, I was so happy to have those. I was just imagining lounging in bed with the doors open, looking at the view. And I've got to say, I've pretty much never done that. Maybe literally never. Okay, I was only doing this for the shots, but this is actually way nice. I should do this. But hey, true bus life has only just begun. Who knows what'll happen? Underneath the bed, I have 75 gallon fresh water tank, 200 amp hour battery, 500 watt inverter, and a bunch of storage. All right guys, thanks for watching my bus tour. And especially thank you to those of you who have had the incredible patience to so slowly watch me build the whole thing. I actually can't believe anybody stayed interested that long. <laughs> Feel free to tell me what good of a job I did. Just kidding, but really. And I have left all of my tools at my sister's house. The plan is to not do any more building this whole summer. Bus shenanigans are the only thing I have on the agenda. So I will see you all in a week or two for some more of those. Forgo, give up everything that I